So day three has ended. I got 73 kilos up on the board. Let's take a look at what happened. Ono, at the end of the day, was able to pull it off, but it wasn't without struggle. Let's take a look at the draw. So as you can see, you have my picks over here in green. Let's take a look and see how they came together. So right off the rip, I had Japan in the final. Let's find him here in the draw. And here he is, and guess what? He made it all the way to the final. I had him fighting Orjov here, so that worked out. We had Tajikistan winning here, that's correct. Um, he fought the Turk in that first round. So overall, pool A picked all the way through. Awesome, I like to see that. Um, pool B is where we went a little awry with our picks, um, mostly because we had Kosovo here, we had Sweden here, that was easy. Um, the Mongolian, we also had coming all the way, <clears throat> all the way through to the end and then again here. So, so far so good. We were only off, huge upset with the guy from Kosovo beating the Swedish guy. He got caught in the last like 15 seconds for Wazari and then the match ended. I couldn't believe it. He barely made it out of the first round too. He got thrown early on. He was able to actually score with zero time on the clock, zero time. He entered his throw with one second through the guy, nothing on the scoreboard, and they actually had to go to video, video review to see if he started the throw before the buzzer rang or not. Turns out he didn't. He was able to actually go into golden score and then finish the match that way. But almost out in the first round, huge upset. Um, again, playing off the idea that going to the World Championships and having that event so close to the Olympics, I think affected a lot of this for everybody. Um, here's where we went a little off again. I had the Georgian all the way into the semi. Um, we had France winning in that first round. Um, we had here was winning a uh, Canadian guy coming through. That was right. Beautiful, doing so, so far so good. Look at that from Kazakhstan coming through. So pool C, again, every match picked all the way through, super easy. Um, pretty happy with that. Let's come through and take a look at Pool D. We had the Korean coming all the way through into the semi, no problem. We had the Israeli fighting him. Look at that. Um, we actually had Kazakhstan coming through. Oh, Germany. Yeah, we had the German, but Uzbekistan came through looking at the wrong one right here. And then I actually had the Cuba beating the guy. So a little off down here in these matches, but at the end of the day, it didn't affect the actual future outcome of the event because they don't actually matter until we hit the quarters. Um, but I did go a little awry in the quarters and I didn't put a little, I didn't put that much thought into the quarter. I was thinking, you know, how does Ono lose? And I think I was picking this draw based on that because I felt like On was the guy to beat Ono on this day. Um, but when you look at the battles that On had throughout the day, and On is right here at the top of Pool C, so let's zoom in on this, right? So you guys can see this. There we go, super big. Uh, super, super important battle right here with Basili. It went eight minutes and 30 seconds of an all out gripping battle. It was super intense, um, sitting on the edge of my seat just and it ended where Fabio, like, I don't know if he just had a mental lapse. I don't know what happened, but I really felt like he was gaining momentum on him. Maybe he felt like he wasn't. And then you just saw him with his hands down. On grabbed the gi and he was just standing there. On came in, Ochi to Osoto, cross grip, ended up throwing him with the drop Osoto for Wazari and ending the match. So he had a long battle here. Then when you go through, Right against the Uzbekistan player, again, man, an all out battle. He just couldn't put people away at this Olympics. Six minutes and 27 seconds into golden score. Then he fights the Israeli and he comes back into it here. Another all out battle. 
eight minutes and 13 seconds on the clock. Now that does not include the actual time spent on the mat where the ref is calling Monte. That's a running clock. Okay, so in total, four, eight, 12 minutes, he's at 16, 20, 22, 23. He's right at about 24 minutes of actual match time instead of 12. So he's almost doubled his allotted time on the mat that he should have had. Whereas the Georgian player, look at this, four minutes, four minutes, 621 against the Canadian, right? So, man, just, it's, it's just crazy to like, when people think about like the draws and who does well, um, it really does affect it because if you don't throw Basili here and you throw Basili up here against like Arthur, I think Basili might actually win that match against Arthur and then actually start working his way through here. And then on is more rested and you get completely different results based on where some of these standout players end up throughout the draw that are unseated. Uh, just something to pay attention to. So shout out to the Georgian player, Satavishvili. Um, something about the Olympic games for this guy, he just rises to the occasion. I have no idea what it is about the Olympic games, but man, he really gets amped up. He really gets pumped up for it. And it really shows in a lot of his results. But if we come up here at the end of the day, we had, let's see here. We had Korea, Japan, Georgia, Canada. Here you have Japan, Georgia, Korea, and the Canadian at fifth. So again, like interchange there, a little bit of a mix up on who actually ended up winning. But I still feel pretty solid with a lot of these picks coming through. Um, you know, they made sense to me just looking at the draw and who was matched up with who. But there wasn't really like a, a standout player in some of the other divisions. Um, I think the only thing of note that was really worth talking about as we were going through here was the battles that on the Korean had to face in order to just get to the semis. And I can only imagine knowing the Olympics and how it works as far as your rest period in between matches, how tired he must have been going into this match. But I will say this, when we look at some of the stats for 73 kilos, uh, number of matches were 38, 15 of them were actually fought in golden score, which again, you can see here as they're highlighted in red. Um, you can download this sheet at the IJF website 13 of the 38 matches, one of the players actually got to two Shitos, but I think something of more note that I'm gonna take more look into and I'm gonna check all the stats and probably do another video on was this stat right here. Boom, both players scored. In the entire 73 kilo, all 38 matches, only two of the matches, both players actually scored. You know, it makes me think and wonder, um, should judo just go to a golden score uh, mentality where if you score in judo, match ends, that's it. Wazari, Oripon, it doesn't matter because the way the rules are written right now and the way the scoring is done, you're not seeing anybody actually get thrown and then actually able to come back out of that throw. Um, just because maybe it's because we moved it down to four minutes, maybe it's because of where the shitos are. There's a lot that could go into play there, but at the end of the day, it's a stat I think worth noting and worth paying attention to as the Olympics go on to see if we can actually see more players uh, creating a back and forth where players are actually scoring. So here's the results um, for 73 kilos at the end of it. Congratulations to Ono for pulling it off on his home soil. I believe that makes Japan straight through the lightweight category, all gold medals. Takato at 60, Abe at 66, Ono at 73. Let's see what happens in the 81s tomorrow.